It's probably one of the most useful constructs that people have ever made because it organizes all of the elements in a way that allows you to understand why they have the properties that they have. You can use it to figure out when you don't have an element what properties it could have if we're able to finally formulate it. As with many things in science, discovery of new elements was almost accidental. I mean, people knew that there should be more elements beyond uranium, which you can find in nature, you can dig it up out of mines. The search was facilitated by particle accelerators, of which the cyclotron is a prime example. And Ernest Orlando Lawrence, the founder of our laboratory, invented the first cyclotron. And his first one was only six inches in diameter. Over the course of decades, they grew to very large sizes, very high energies, were extremely valuable tools for doing the experiments that led to the discovery of new elements. Some of these elements were fermium, curium, einsteinium, californium, berkelium, americium, and of course, seaborgium that I was involved with. Ernest Lawrence, in, in order to build and run his cyclotron and get new science out of it, brought together a team that included physicists, engineers, chemists, and that's actually been the inspiration for big physics and actually other kinds of big science ever since. The elements that we discovered were in debris from tests that were done at Los Alamos National Laboratory. They shipped it off to Berkeley and we did a bunch of chemical separations. And so that's how we discovered Einsteinium and Fermium. The other elements were discovered using facilities here at the lab. And those were done by taking a thin foil of a radioactive material, say americium, neptunium, plutonium, and irradiating it with other elements, usually helium, carbon, or nitrogen, to make something heavier. These experiments were done really at the height of the Cold War, and there was extremely strong competition between our group at Berkeley and a group at the Soviet Union at Dubna that was led by Nikolai Flerov. They were always claiming that they had done the same work we had done, but a few months beforehand. There was a lot of uh, in initially animosity between them and strong arguments, and it was really not until after the end of the Cold War when all of these things were sorted out. And one of the things specifically was that the claim that they had done the 106 experiment before we had was clearly rejected. And so we were given the honor of naming element 106, which we named Seaborgium. So one of the things that Glenn Seaborg did really was his, his, one of his main contributions to chemistry was the realization that from the elements actinium on up, there was a great parallel with the rare earth series in the periodic table. So he proposed a new series called actinides that essentially collected all of these atoms from, uh, from actinium up to lawrencium, actually, as part of this, of this new series. It's those two series of elements called the F elements, commonly called the lanthanides or the actinides. The reason why I focus on this is because they have some very interesting chemical properties and um, their chemistry is less explored. A lot of the elements that we work on, we're still discovering the properties about them, but some of the, the uses that people don't always think about is americium is one element that we study. It's not naturally occurring on Earth. It has to be man-made. And it's in every fire detector in every home. I am really in awe of what all of those folks did during that time. With the, the very crude tools that they had compared to what we can do today, and the complexity of the chemistry, they were really geniuses. To me, it's really exciting to be working at a place with that history and with that type of contribution to, to science. I think it's beautiful. I think it's this great tribute to the fact that humans were able to figure this out. I think of it in the end like most great human constructs as being a, a bit of science and a bit of art.